Reducing kidney function decline in patients with CKD, core curriculum 2021 in April from the American Journal of Kidney Diseases. So we're gonna go over a few points in the journal then I'm gonna expand on them in another video because it's a lot to cover and, and I really wanna break down different sections. So in the, in the article, they go over the, the core ways that we know about like control blood pressure, control blood sugar. So you should be uh, have good medications, good proper management with your doctor and then doing all the things in your power to control those factors. So aside from those, here are a couple of ways that they mention that you can help uh, slow down the loss of kidney function. One of them is addressing metabolic acidosis, which is acid buildup. Now, I can't tell you the amount of people that I've come across who don't have metabolic acidosis ever addressed. And they're going to major um, nephrology uh, departments and universities and very few times uh, metabolic acidosis is ever addressed and it's really surprising to see it and it correlates with all the research in the last few years that not addressing metabolic acidosis is so bad for the kidney it can increase the loss of kidney function up to 30 percent and very few doctors are actually addressing it and a recent article showed that pediatric nephrologists almost never address it which is it's really just crazy in this day and age that uh, this isn't getting addressed, which has such a big, big impact on people with kidney disease. So uh, the next video after this is gonna be all about metabolic acidosis, how to look for it, how to detect it on your own, and then how to address it, all right? Because like I mentioned, I can't tell you the amount of people that, uh, that contact us here at Healthy Kidney Inc. and all we're doing is, is correcting metabolic acidosis. And a lot of times when you correct it, kidney function goes up, okay? So that's an awesome, great thing, and that's what we want. Another thing is ideal body weight, all right? They mentioned keeping an ideal body weight is so important. If you're not at an ideal body weight, losing the weight to get to an ideal body weight is really, really important for kidney health because the more weight you have, the more stress on the kidneys. The less weight you have, less stress on the kidneys. So just losing weight by itself in many cases has shown tremendous improvement in kidney function. So if you're not at a ideal weight, look to lose weight through a healthy, kidney-friendly diet, very important for yourself. Another one they mentioned is lowering sodium intake. So getting rid of as much salt and sodium out of your diet as possible. That is standard. That's been known for decades of the big impact that sodium has. You can even, in a lot of studies, they cut down the protein urea, the, the, the protein leaking out into in your urine. Uh, they've cut the sodium in uh, drastically and then the protein urea cut down drastically also in some cases like 40, 50%. So that's big. Now with sodium, uh, make sure not to have it in packaged foods. So always uh, try to get fresh whole foods, meaning not pre-packaged, packaged foods, because uh, those tend to have a lot of sodium. Anytime you eat out, a lot of sodium. So always ask for uh, no added salt if you're eating out. And look to all the other natural uh, ways you can flavor foods with lemon juice, lime juice, Miss Dash, and there's a whole bunch of other of uh, salt-free seasoning lines that are really good to use. So if you're not, Cut down that sodium, really important. Avoid animal protein. So there is no doubt about it in today's day and age that eating animal protein with kidney disease is not good. It's gonna damage your kidney further. And I still see people recommending animal proteins. Now that's okay depending on your situation. You're in stage one, two, three A of kidney disease. Maybe you can have a little animal protein and maybe your lifestyle doesn't account for not having it, meaning you gotta cook for your family and they're all meat eaters. So uh, you gotta look to reduce it as much as you can, all right? Whatever what's in your lifestyle and your ability, reduce the animal protein and replace it with vegetarian-based proteins, being nuts, seeds, beans, lentils, things like that. So reduce or avoid animal protein as much as you can. Avoid nephrotoxins. There was a whole section on this because nephrotoxins are everywhere. The typical ones are the NSAIDs, okay, which I talk about in other videos. Uh, they, rec uh, they talk about PPIs, which are proton pump inhibitors, something that you use to control acid reflux and really not good to use and really bad. And we still see a lot of people here at Healthy Kidney who are getting proton pump inhibitors. And even uh, recently, doctors are telling them, well, it's a really low risk. Don't worry about it. Not true. The American Journal of Kidney Diseases is telling you proton pump inhibitors are bad for kidney disease. Try not to take them. If you have to take them, only take them for a short time. The alternative is to use like an H2 blocker. Okay, that's another class of acid reflux medications that you can use. And a really great natural option that is shown to be a one-to-one -one 
meaning it has the same effect with less side effects as all these proton pump inhibitors, is drinkable aloe vera. The brand we recommend here is George's Aloe Vera because it doesn't taste like anything. Or another brand is Lily of the Desert, which does have a taste to it, which isn't that great. Um, those can be used to help with any type of stomach problems, acid reflux, gastritis, and they work wonders. I've been recommending it since I've been in practice for uh, over 15 years now. And the amount of people that, um, that come in here with the relief from it is, is just great. All right? It really does good things. Uh, the other thing they recommend avoiding iodinated iodine contrast iodinated contrast so that's when you get an mri and they got to put a uh, a chemical in you so they be able to see better don't use the iodine based ones make sure it's not that because they're damaging to the kidney now they generally uh, like to use gadolinium okay it's another type of uh, contrast that one's safer but can still run problems with kidney disease so if you do have to get an MRI with contrast, you want to drink a lot of water before, uh, before you go for the contrast. That helps protect the kidney being well hydrated. You can take a little bit of sodium bicarb, okay, which we're gonna talk about in the other video related to metabolic acidosis. But if you're going for an MRI, taking a little bit of sodium bicarb helps protect the kidney. Also vitamin C, vitamin E help protect the kidney during any type of uh, contrast that you're getting. So things that you can incorporate just be mindful of those areas that I mentioned, those, those top things. Uh, the metabolic acidosis we'll address in another video. Ideal body weight, reducing animal protein, and avoiding those nephrotoxins. And doing those things can help slow down your kidney function according, well, slow down the loss of kidney function according to the American Journal of Kidney Diseases. And I know it's gonna slow it down because I work with thousands of people and we've done all types of evidence-based protocols but these are things that you can do for yourself that'll work. They've helped me and they can help you too if you have kidney disease. Thanks for watching everybody. Check out our channel here at Healthy Kidney Inc. Like, subscribe and to your best kidney health.